You are so, so ugly that people avoid you because they see you as a monster, and because of that, you get used to being alone. Well, that's exactly what happened to our protagonist. But he didn't care at all because all he thought about were his studies. And if you're wondering how they get stronger, well, by doing the deed with the waifus. Wait, what? This is the story of Takuma Akatsu, a big guy with shark teeth who, just by standing up, scared all his classmates. He even made one jump out the window out of fear. Yes, folks, this isn't a joke. Even the teacher was afraid of him, and they called him an Akuma, which was basically a kind of monster. For that reason, from a very young age, he either pushed other kids away or picked fights with older people, all because of his appearance. But in reality, the guy was like Shrek, judged without being known. As I said, he liked that because it allowed him to focus on his studies. So one night, he goes to a house his parents left him to get into Einstein mode. However, when he arrives, he finds the nine waifus almost naked, and this is where I wonder why these things never happen to me. There he meets three of them, one who isn't afraid of terror called Itsuyo, another with some good potential attributes, Matsumi, and one who was in his class named Natsuki. He also meets the others, but will learn their names later. The truth is that the protagonist calmed down thanks to one of them who had a motherly appearance and managed to have everyone calmly eat dinner because, yes folks, the guy was about to call the police for finding a bunch of strangers in his house. But anyway, after this, we see Natsuki go to study with the protagonist, but in reality, it was to spend more time alone with him to level up, meaning to fall in love with him, and she had already agreed to this with the rest of her companions as they seem to plan to take turns. So to help her, one of them sends them to the supermarket to buy some things she had forgotten, on the condition that they don't let go of each other's hand. They had just met and already seemed like a couple. But well, if you're wondering why they went there, it was on orders from their father Odin, as they needed to find love to become stronger and defeat the demons appearing in the protagonist city. Speaking of demons, we see one randomly appear while they were on their way to the supermarket. So to defeat it, the waifu takes off her clothes and makes the protagonist appreciate her good attributes. Wait, what happened? Yes, folks, that's how the waifu gains more power, transforms, and quickly defeats the demon, but she faints after the fight. As expected, not all the waifus wanted to fall in love with the protagonist, especially one named Achika who believed he wasn't the right match for them, but she had to change her mind for the sake of that world. And well, when everything ends and the protagonist is all battered, Odin tells him he will need nine sacred swords to protect his home, and that's why he sent nine beautiful Valkyries. When everything was over, the waifu reminded the protagonist of the promise he made to his mother to become a respectable person. Because of that, he had to help them, as the world could cease to exist if he didn't, and he wouldn't be able to fulfill his promise. These words motivated the protagonist a bit, but just a bit, because the next day, when they arrived at school, he was all nervous about the exam results. On the other hand, we find out that Itsuyo had become the student council president and was at the top of the scoreboard. Matsumi was in the top 30, and Natsumi, well, let's not even mention her because she seemed pretty dumb. Meanwhile, they saw the protagonist's grades and realized he was last in his class. They went to ask him why he did so poorly if he was always studying. He told them that his fear of people made him so nervous that he couldn't answer correctly, and this worried him because the entrance exam was approaching. Nat tried to cheer him up, and what better way to do it than by strangling the poor guy until he ran off and started scaring everyone as usual. The saddest part is that he runs away from one crazy girl only to run into another. Just as he was about to leave the school, Itsuyo kidnapped him in one of the classrooms and told him she had to be the first to fall in love with him to please her father. Yes, folks, this waifu has daddy issues, so she tried many things to get closer to him, but nothing worked. He eventually escaped when the school bell rang. When the waifu went to look for him, a demon appeared floating around the school randomly. This surprised her because, according to her father's oracle, no demons should have appeared yet. But there was no time to think about that, so she gathered her two sisters and the protagonist and made a plan to deal with the demon before it started causing chaos. They trapped it in a barrier while Nat transformed and started started fighting the demon. Meanwhile, the president took the protagonist to an empty classroom to do the deed because she wanted to become stronger than her sister, but she chickened out because she was doing it out of obligation. Seeing that she was nervous, the protagonist placed his hand on her head, calming her down and giving her a kiss on the cheek. Thanks to this, the waifu transformed and helped her sister defeat the demon. When it was all over, Nat felt a bit jealous seeing that he was getting closer to her sister and losing his fear of people. At the same time, we realized that one of the guys studying with them, named Garm didn't seem very good, to say the least. Days passed, and the girls continued creating barriers to fight the demons that appeared. We also learned that only three of them could currently fight due to their powers. Therefore, they all agreed that Matsumi should have a date with the protagonist to help them out. The thing was, since she was an idol, she hardly had time to spend with the protagonist like the others. It was more complicated because her fame attracted a lot of attention due to her beauty and special attributes. This caused the protagonist anxiety. So, during their date at the mall, 
mall, they had to find a quiet place to talk. They entered a bookstore, where the waifu recommended a book for him to study and improve his grades. At the same time, she told him that she became an idol because of her sisters, as none of them wanted to do it. It was a good opportunity to find dates and become stronger. She also shared that when she was little, a demon attacked her, which reminded the protagonist of a sad memory with his mother, making him not want to continue the conversation. As they left the store, he told the waifu that it was better to return home. Just as they were about to do so, Garm apparently created a talking demon that started shouting that the famous idol was among them. They ran to hide from the fans chasing her, ending up in a room with no exit and had to lock themselves in a locker. As they were so close together, their hormones stirred, allowing the waifu to transform just before the fans opened the locker, managing to escape. Her ability allowed her to fly and camouflage with a kind of dust, so no one saw anything. After everything settled, the waifu apologized for putting him through a tough time. But in the end, not everything was bad, because while they were floating, she gave him a wonderful view that reminded him of the good times he had with his mother. Meanwhile, Ichika was acting as a bodyguard on Futaba's orders. While reporting about the date over the phone, she took the opportunity to invite her to an upcoming festival. Although the waifu didn't like the protagonist, she planned to attend for her sister's sake and because she knew someone was following them. Yes, folks, remember the guy I mentioned earlier? Well, this guy is a demon dog sent by Fenrir to eliminate the Valkyries. He planned to do so at the festival when they all gathered. Additionally, he wasn't alone. A mysterious dwarf was also observing him. In a change of scene, we see the waifus organizing a game to help the protagonist forget about the entrance exam and to gain even more of his trust. The game involved eliminating participants by stealing their panties, and since they were all women, you can imagine how nervous the guy got. Anyway, Futaba took the game very seriously and started eliminating everyone. While they were running away from her, the protagonist encountered one of the nine Valkyries named Shino. This waifu is the one who creates barriers to fight demons and protect humans. When the other waifu managed to take all the panties from her sisters, we see that they had planned everything to give the protagonist a good luck charm for his exams. But since Natsuki was too embarrassed, she organized the game. I didn't quite understand that part, but anyway, the point is that the waifu appreciated the protagonist and wanted to thank him for taking care of them. That same night, the waifus gathered to discuss the demon appearances, knowing they had a traitor among them, but they still didn't know who it was. The next day, Natsuki was at school trying to figure out who that person was, but she lost focus when some classmates told her that the waifu who was supposed to dress like an idol for the festival was absent and asked her to do it instead. When she put on the costume, she drove all the guys crazy with how beautiful she looked. Well, all except for the protagonist. The guy had her right in front of him and was only thinking about his studies or pretending to be clueless to avoid waking the titan. Then Garm arrives, introducing himself as Inukai from the student council. He came to inspect her performance for the festival, but in reality, the sneaky guy just wanted to test the Valkyrie's resistance without using their transformation. So he uses his stone to create demons and make the students fight. Fortunately, the protagonist gets furious when he sees his waifu about to get hurt and takes down all the demons. After being the hero of the day, the lovebirds walk home together, and the waifu says it was a troublesome day because of everything that happened. The guy agrees, saying he couldn't study because of the mess. This upsets the waifu since all he could think about was studying, even while being with her. She starts to think she's not pretty enough for him, but then the protagonist tells her that he did find her very pretty. He was just too shy to say it, and well, when he said that, she turned redder than a tomato, so much so that she ran off and left him alone. Days pass, and the day of the festival arrives, with each class hosting a different activity. Nat ends up playing the role of a maid. While attending to the guests, she spies on the protagonist and the albino girl, Yakumo, who was exploiting the protagonist's naivety and getting him to drink coffee in a way you'd all envy. Just kidding. Before things could get too steamy, Nat interrupts them, and the other girls arrive. The guys in the protagonist's class start feeling jealous of him for being surrounded by beautiful waifus. One of the girls mentions there will be a dance at night and suggests they all dance with Takuma. However, the protagonist declines, worried that dancing with the now popular Nat could cause trouble. Feeling hurt by his words, Nat distances herself from everyone. Futaba notices she's upset and goes to cheer her up, mentioning that Itsuyo entered her in a beauty contest. This news lifts Nat's spirits but also irritates her since she wasn't informed about it. Meanwhile, the protagonist is with Misa and Kururi in a haunted house. He takes the opportunity to advise Misa to apologize to Nat when she sees her, but he doesn't even understand why he needs to apologize. Then, an eel accidentally gets into Misa's clothes, and she runs off in fright while the protagonist helps remove it, using the chance to touch her more than necessary. As he exits the haunted house, he encounters Garm. Garm seizes the opportunity, with the protagonist separated from the waifus, to initiate an attack at the festival.
festival, turning all the students into demons. He captures the protagonist while the waifus are distracted fighting a giant monster Garm created. They are unable to transform while far from the protagonist. Back with Takuma, he gets beaten up but remembers Nat's encouraging words when she gave him the good luck charm. Motivated, he tries to fight Garm, but it's futile and he gets beaten up again. All he manages to do is buy enough time for Futaba to find them, thanks to her older sister, who had been marking students throughout the festival to identify the one working with the malevolent gods, leading them to locate the protagonist. Battle heats up between the waifu and Garm. Meanwhile, the protagonist tries to escape to help the other waifus, but Garm attempts to send him to the afterlife, tearing him apart with fangs embedded in his stomach. Fortunately, the good luck charm has a powerful healing spell that restores him, allowing him to escape. However, he jumps from one problem into another, as he begins fighting his friends who have turned into demons. This triggers a flashback to his childhood, when he promised his mother he would study hard, get into a good university, then a good company, and become someone respectable so he could make friends who wouldn't mistreat him. Remembering this, he becomes motivated, and with the opening soundtrack playing, he starts taking down all the demons, until he encounters Nat. While her sisters fight the giant demon and are running out of clothes due to using their powers, the protagonist and Nat also start stripping to kiss and embrace for five seconds, as this would level up the waifu and help her assist her sisters. After their awkward, their efforts pay off. Meanwhile, Futaba defeats Garm, and before he can escape, she confirms her suspicions. The malevolent gods are gathering ether for the upcoming Great War. After Garm retreats with his tail between his legs, the mysterious dwarf reappears and scolds him for failing. It seems the dwarf is stronger than Garm, but is still wary of the waifus and the protagonist, who, after practically returning from the dead, could become a significant threat. Once things return to normal, the festival continues. The waifus participate in their beauty contest, which Matsumi wins. They had agreed that the winner would dance with the protagonist, but knowing that Nat wanted to and wanting her to reconcile with the protagonist, Matsumi lets her have the dance. Days pass, and we see Takuma studying as usual, when Karuri approaches them saying she finished an invention she had been working on for months. It was a doctor's suit that Futaba had commissioned, since they were always fighting and needed to heal in case of an emergency. So, to test if the suit worked, they decided to play doctor, and well, also for the protagonist to grope them because he would be the doctor and had to examine them all. The very dirty Takuma started by checking Futaba's tremendous attributes, under the guise of checking her breathing. Then he applied cream all over Misa's body, played dentist with Matsumi, saw Nat again with barely any clothes on, and made the president very uncomfortable. Well, all of them actually, because with the intention of improving their health, he only made them feel uncomfortable and ended up injured himself because the suit was defective and exploded, leaving the poor guy wrapped up like a mummy, and the ones who really took care of him were the waifus. The next day, the president tries to get closer to the protagonist and prepares him food, but things don't go exactly as she wanted, so she goes to Misa to ask for advice on love or how to have a date. As she had heard rumors that she was quite the expert in Asgard, however, they were just rumors because she actually had no experience with any man, yet she knew her sister also wanted to level up like Nat to not be a burden, so she decides to support her. That's why she starts a vow love with the protagonist for her to take notes, which consisted of spending an hour in the same room without the guy realizing it was a kind of date. Although all they did was fold a bunch of clothes, and speaking of clothes, the waifu hardly had any on, yeah folks, she got all sexy to do that with the protagonist and the poor guy was controlling himself as much as he could, although well in the end, they didn't do anything wrong, just touched each other a little. Bit, you know, normal stuff, and they also got to know each other better, since it was her first date with a man and she also realized that Takuma had suffered a lot, because he finished folding the pile of clothes very quickly, and told her that he was used to it because he lost his mother when he was a child and had to do everything by himself, but well, after that sad moment, the guys end the date, Misa gives Nat a plush toy she had made for her and also gives one to the protagonist to apologize for involving him in their fights, although in reality the waifu did it because she was also feeling something for him and it was her way of showing it. The next day, while everyone was having breakfast, they receive a package from their father with bad news, as his father's oracle told them that a demon would appear the following day. So, Futaba took advantage of everyone being together to create an attack plan and defeat it easily. That's why she tells Nat to use her transformation to see how strong she had become. B.U.T. when she kisses the protagonist, she fails to transform, yeah folks, the waifu shoved her tongue deep and nothing. This is because her AP, that is, the energy they used to fight was exhausted from the last fight because what she did with the protagonist was so intense that it drained her completely, but not all was lost, as Futaba asked the dwarf to create a board where the protagonist could see the level of AP each of them had, and the ones closest to leveling up to fight were Matsumi and the albino, so the protagonist had a date with them to level them up. First, it was with the albino, and their date consisted of holding hands in a park for an hour. The thing is, the waifu intimidated the protagonist the most out of all the girls, as she had a strong sense of hearing, so much so that she could clearly hear the protagonist's heartbeats, and that's why the guy was trying to control them not to disturb her, but in the end, he got very nervous and everything went 
downhill. After this, he had his date with Matsumi, in which he had to take some very hot photos of her. And since the albino was quite hot, she starts bothering them to make the situation even spicier. Yeah, folks, things got plus 18 when the waifu started eating ice cream in a rather strange way. But unfortunately, the demon appears earlier than expected and is stopped by the older sisters until the other two finish their transformation. And unlike Nat, with some kisses, they manage to level up. However, the fight gets complicated and the waifus try to weaken the demon's AP to defeat it, although the guy doesn't leave them alone for a moment. And to top it off, the albino was stressed because the protagonist was accelerating the heartbeats even more with all the commotion. This waifu is quite silly. There's a huge mess and she's only bothered by the protagonist's heartbeats. WTF. But well, in the middle of the commotion, Takuma remembers that Futaba asked him to protect her sisters because if something happened to them, he was the only one who could heal them or give them power. And that's exactly what he does. Just when they had exhausted all their AP, the guy summons a grimoire, recharges the waifu's energy, and between the three of them, they manage to take down the monster. After all the danger passes, we see that Yakumo also starts falling in love with the protagonist. But when she was going to bring him a drink to sit with him and hang out, Nat had beaten her to it and ended up insulting him. In a change of scene, we see two waifus of dubious origin arriving in the city, Roskva and Skuld. Despite appearing like ordinary girls, they didn't give off a good vibe. On the other hand, Misa sends the president and Nat to go shopping, taking advantage of the opportunity to have a Val love with the protagonist to level up. In this scenario, the guy had to simulate saving the girls from a harasser, but the police mistook him for the harasser and detained him for a while. Meanwhile, the waifu playing the role of harasser was Nat, and she got really into the role, to the point where when she started touching her sister, it was as if she was batting for the other team. Partly because she felt jealous that her bustiness was bigger than hers. But well, she was older, so it was expected. And well, the truth is, when the police finally released the protagonist, the waifu was already tired of being groped by her sister. And by the time the protagonist arrived to rescue her, it was too late. On the other hand, we see that the dwarf who was with the dog was called Taka and was well known among the people. They even loved him, but the fools didn't know he was with the demons. When he returned home with the shopping, he told Garm to prepare the food because they were going to have some special guests that night or well, he thought they were going to arrive at night. But the waifus entered his house as if nothing, sent by orders from the duke to destroy the Valkyries and acquire the Mistletine, which was the ability the protagonist used to regenerate himself like Majin Buu when he was cut in half, which came from a sacred tree or something like that. At the same time, we see Nat returning home with the protagonist when suddenly she has a bad feeling. Because yeah, things were about to get ugly apparently, which is why Ichika arrives to test her and help her sisters, tired of seeing Takuma instead of helping them as their companion was just depending on them. Well, after her sisters introduced her, the guy almost shat his pants thanks to her personality, and they already knew each other because she reminded him that she had been protecting his pathetic ass in all the fights against the demons. But well, the truth is that since Nat wasn't ready to fight yet, she went to level up to replace her. So, they start a Val love, in which they have to take a bath together. But since Futaba knew that if she left him alone with her things would end badly, she told Nat and the albino girl to accompany them to improve the atmosphere. When they started bathing, we learned that Achika is extremely strong, so much so that she's practically a demigod, capable of fighting high-ranking gods and just like Yakumo, she had a gift, but instead of having super hearing, she had super sensitive skin. And well, while the protagonist was rubbing her back, the waifu manages to transform, but her hormones get so stirred up that they end up with no energy. On the other hand, we see that Skuld was planning a surprise attack against their fortress to send the protagonist to St. Peter with just one blow. The next day, while the waifus were having dinner with Takuma, Futaba tells her sisters that they need to strive to improve their advantages because despite being strong, there are demigods and gods stronger than them in Valhalla. This is because of their ether, which in the case of humans is like their soul. The stronger their abilities, the more powerful they will be. And well, that was the reason why the malevolent gods were attacking their world, to become stronger. Speaking of attack, just as Skuld and the others began their surprise attack, what they didn't expect was that Achika was also keeping an eye on them, and this waifu wasn't messing around. She confronted all three of them alone, and when she found out that Garm was with them, she knocked him out with a single blow and almost sliced the other's throat. Yes, folks, in the end, Skuld wasn't as strong as we expected because Achika was kicking their asses alone, and she couldn't finish them off because of a random guy who she mistook for Taka. When she attacked him, Skuld took advantage of the opening to kiss her servant and thus summon three demons in one blow. Fortunately, the president arrived with Nat and the protagonist to help Achika, and since they were also injured, they escaped. But before they left, they warned Takuma that they were saving him a spot with the big man upstairs in their next encounter. Later, Achika gets upset because the protagonist was still completely useless to them, so they went to buy some magazines to improve their skills, but the waifu ended up being scammed. On the other hand, the protagonist didn't want to show them what he had bought and went to his room looking very suspicious. Meanwhile, the waifus gathered to make a plan for the fight against Norn, the group where the demigod who kissed 
convinced the other to use her powers was. When she does it, she gets messed up because she has the ability to create an infinity of demons, and even so, she managed to take over an important palace in their world, so they couldn't underestimate her again. But well, they forget all that when they start to have a few drinks, and then the protagonist arrives, and they send him to take Nat to her bed because she had had too many beers. But before doing so, Ichika threatens him if he tries to take advantage of her little sister in that situation. When they're in the room, the waifu starts undressing to provoke him, but the guy gives her a huge slap in the face to snap her out of it because he knew that if he did something, the other waifu would cut him off. After the blow, Nat sobers up and realizes that the protagonist had bought a dating book because he was bad at love, and that was his only job with them he wanted to improve, so she asks him for some advice and thanks to that, she can't take it anymore and practically confesses to him indirectly, but the fool doesn't realize it, typical man stuff, and the waifu ends up getting mad at him, as usual. On the other hand, Skuld was already preparing her attack for that night, but this time, it was Futaba who transformed to confront her. In a scene change, we see a small memory of when Odin told her that she was the weakest of all because she had less ether. However, the waifu never gave up and trained with none other than Thor to become stronger. Still, they knew that their only chance to defeat Skuld was by defeating her servant, so she would lose her transformation and stop summoning demons. Speaking of transformation, for a moment we have a bit of fan service when Futaba and the protagonist completed their vow love in the bathroom, as Futaba had to embrace her without clothes while kissing her. But well, back to the drama, we see Futaba holding the waifu's back while Achika and the protagonist try to attack them from behind to carry out their plan. On the other hand, we see that Shino was almost out of power to maintain the protective barrier and was also looking after the humans, and since powers there are really strange, the waifu didn't have any clothes either. On the other hand, Ichika told the protagonist about Futaba's powers and said she was the weakest, which made him upset because he thought it was all his fault. If he had been given more power, they probably wouldn't be getting beaten up, and the wall he had built would have held a little longer because it was about to be destroyed by a colossal titan. And well, just before that happened, Ichika transforms and tries to attack Skuld, but seeing that she can't even scratch her, she goes for her servant as planned. The thing is, that's when the protagonist realizes that one of the demon eggs is missing, and it turns out that the servant had it inside her, so the protagonist realizes that quickly and saves Ichika from the trap at the last moment. After this, the waifu tells him that she was going to sacrifice herself for the sake of her sisters, but she wanted him to promise that he would take care of them. However, the protagonist doesn't let her. As scared as he was, he knew how important she was to her sisters and deep down he loved all of them, so he starts kissing her to level up. There we see a little memory of when she was little and her father asked her what kind of boy she liked, and she replied that she had no interest in any boy, as long as she had her spear she was happy, but at the same time, unknowingly described someone with the qualities of the protagonist. In that way, they completed the vow love, and the waifu finally accepted him as her partner, but this time both of them transformed and began the counterattack against Skull. At that moment, Nat separates from her sisters and manages to reach the protagonist to help them fight. This time, when she kisses him, she does manage to level up again and transform. But even though the three of them go all out against Norn, they couldn't defeat them, as when they felt cornered, the waifus also merged their bodies and transformed into a super broken demon. Plus, Shino reached her limit and the protective barrier broke. Fortunately, when they thought all was lost, Nat attacks her with her swords to restrain her and prevent her from stealing the souls of the nearby humans, and the protagonist takes the opportunity to use all his power and bet his soul to protect them all. Thanks to that, Roskva remembers that she did the same once for her mistress and manages to touch the waifu's heart, or so it seems, because after that, they lose the transformation and the guys end up winning the battle. However, when Achika was about to slice her, she sees that she has a different eye from the others and lets them escape, because when she saw that, the first thing that came to her mind was her sister Shino, as apparently both suffered from a terrible disease. And well, while the waifus helped the protagonist and the people who were near all the chaos, we see that part of the bad guy's plan was to steal the seed left by the Mistletine, and since the rest of the sisters couldn't transform while protecting it, Misa had to sacrifice herself to protect her sisters, leaving her on the brink of death. Fortunately, as the protagonist was chosen by Odin to heal them, he manages to enter the place where her soul was to save her. The thing is, if he failed in the attempt, he would also go with the big guy upstairs, but that wasn't the case, because after remembering his mother and the promise he made to her, the guy was inspired and managed to save her. Thanks to this, the waifus realized that he had improved a lot as their partner, and they began to fall even more in love with him than they already were. Besides, Shino managed to recover and finally came out of the room she was in, as they were going to need the help of the Valkyrie with the strongest armor of all, so she was probably going to have to do some disrespectful stuff with her to level up, and the craziest thing of all was that the protagonist felt like he already knew her from somewhere else, but well, we'll find out more later. Once everything returns to normal, classes continue, and the guy, thanks to the help of the waifus, manages to overcome his fear of people, because when he takes the entrance exam, he comes in first place, and after so long, he fulfills the promise he made to his deceased mother. He knew he had achieved it thanks to his efforts and
and the girls. So when he gets home, he goes into the dressing room and sees the bustiness of all three. But he did it unintentionally because he just wanted to tell them that he loved them all. But the girls hoped that one day he would choose just one. And so ends the first season of this anime. If you liked it, don't forget to leave the word Valkyrie in the comments for more similar content.